Should you get a 3D printer even if you think plastic is crap? Nobody really needs an excuse to buy a new tool, but let's say hypothetically you need to justify it to someone who thinks you, you spend way too much on tools already. I make lots of stuff here, mostly out of metal and wood, but I use a 3D printer in just about every project. I'm going to show you how I use them and then show how you can use them to do just about anything in whatever craft you're already doing, even if you never make things out of plastic. First up, what do they do? Well, the filament printer here uses this plastic wire and it melts it onto a plate to build up the thing layer by layer, while the resin one here uses this goop in there that hardens when it's exposed to UV light. There's a little LCD screen under there that puts out UV light and hardens it in a certain pattern. Then it builds another layer, another layer, another layer. They're kind of similar, but also very not. Think about it like this. MIG welders, TIG welders, and stick welders use electricity to melt metal to stick a metal thing to some other metal stuff. All of them can do lots of welding jobs, but the different types still have different strengths. Same with these. You can worry about the details later, and the technology is constantly changing anyway. But what good is this plastic stuff for someone who's making things out of metal, for example? Obviously metal 3D printers exist, they're a little out of the budget. I've used these plastic ones for, for metal casting, sheet metal shaping, woodworking, bunch of other stuff. But let's start with metal casting. So investment casting is the easy answer here. Treat the plastic like wax, put it through a lost wax process, and whatever you can print in plastic, you can make in metal. I've used this one for investment casting recently. I will be using this one for investment casting in the future. So stay tuned for that, but there's more. I've barely done investment casting, I generally do sand casting. Traditionally in sand casting, you make a pattern out of wood. The patterns need to be able to pull out of the sand without screwing up the sand, which means there needs to be draft, no undercuts, all that sort of thing. Those are the same features that make them very easy to print. So basically, any wood pattern that you can ram up in the sand, you can probably print very easily which is why the majority of castings I've done recently, including this bronze one right here, were done with 3D printed patterns. Imagine the time I saved not having to carve this thing out of wood. But not just the patterns, I've printed these. These are for forming like the sprue and the runners and stuff. It's how the metal gets into the mold through the sand. Printing them like this means I can control very easily the diameter, the length, the, the angle and the taper, everything. And I can do it repeatedly. It's, it's much easier, at least for me, than the old school method of just carving the sand out with a spoon. And sometimes you need a mold for the sand, called a core box. I've printed those too. This is to make a lump of sand. You know, you, you, you force the sand in here, you pull it out, and this goes in a pattern for a hammerhead casting. Here's a 3D printed pattern from years ago. That part goes where this lump is, and it goes through the middle. That gives you a hole in the finished casting for the handle to go in. All 3D printed on this. Well, not this, an older version of this, but it would do it on this too. This one is to make something called a pouring basin. More professional outfits use, use core boxes and stuff made out of machined steel, very precise, but I'm kind of a, a home jobber, so close enough plastic works for me. I've also seen people use 3D printed molds for casting like silicone or wax or chocolate, whatever. But what about sheet metal fabrication? So obviously you can't get any of this stuff anywhere near a welder because it's just way too hot, it'll melt. But I've 3D printed these bead roller dies uh, that I've used successfully on 18 gauge steel. But even better, you can print any radius or shape or bead or whatever you want. I'm not gonna say they work as well as steel because obviously they're not going to, but they're a lot cheaper and you can make whatever you feel like. And they're way cheaper, obviously. And if it wears out, just get another one. These are made out of PLA, which is a kind of plastic filament that is not known for being particularly strong and they handle the job just fine. Okay, what about woodworking? Well, check out these. These are little clamp things to give you 90, you know, you, you stick the thing 90, 90 degrees, put clamps on, holds it in place. These are just simple ones. There are way more complicated clamp things and other jigs you can make. Go on Thingiverse and just look around, type in pocket hole jig and just be amazed at all the, the tons of them that you can download and print and use. Not saying they're gonna work as great as the aluminum ones that you can buy at Woodcraft, but they're not gonna be as expensive either. And if it wears out, get another one. And if you want, say you don't want 90 degrees, say you want 85 degrees, well, you can make that. Say you want 72.5 degrees for whatever reason, you can do that too. And that's just a few examples. That ignores the little things like the screwdriver bit handle or like drawer pulls or handles for stuff or you need plastic feet for a chair, you can print that. Little organization boxes, pegboard hangers, uh, an organizer for your wife's cricket tools, you can print that too. 
So how do you get the files? Well, uh, you can download for free from a bunch of websites. Think of ours, My Mini Factory. I have a bunch of stuff in My Mini Factory that I've cast. Or you can design them yourselves in a program like Blender or Fusion 360. Those are the two I use. If you can model it, you can probably print it, you know, within reason. Okay, let's say you're convinced. Which one of these two types should you get? Well, they both work for most things, but there are differences. Again, it's like welders. What's better, MIG welding, TIG welding, or stick welding? Well, what are you doing? Resin printers can definitely do better detail. And I mean, better than your eyes can see. But filament printers are cheaper to run in my experience. The filament's cheaper, it goes farther, you don't have alcohol post-processing, you don't have to cure them more with more ultraviolet or whatever. I've also found FDM prints to be less likely to warp and deform, but you know, that may be down to the orientation of the part. For example, these three metal runner formers were printed in different orientations and they all look different. Clearly, one of them is perfect, the other two, meh. Resin printers, however, don't have prominent layer lines, which means you don't have to sand like crazy to get it to release from the sand if you are metal casting, for example. The difference isn't huge, but, you know, it's, it's noticeable, at least from my testing. I did quite a bit of testing, actually, and in my experience, the resin prints aren't as brittle as the internet would have you believe. I suspect that reputation is from those, like, small, super detailed miniatures that get a lot of press on YouTube 3D printing channels. Obviously, they're gonna be more brittle than like the injection molded ABS plastic ones, but the stuff I've printed is chunky and it takes quite a bit of abuse. I slammed this pouring basin thing on the desk really hard a bunch of times and I threw the, the tapered sprue form around the concrete repeatedly and only chipped a tiny bit. Certainly not bad and this is resin that's not designed to be shockproof. Speaking of that, Different resins and different filaments have different properties. And if you do some digging, you can probably find one that does what you want it to. Enjoy falling down that particular rabbit hole. It is really deep. So, in my opinion, if budget allows, uh, get them both. I have both a MIG and TIG welder back there for a reason. 3D printing, however, is easy to learn as far as tools go. Skilled TIG welding, for example, much harder than any 3D printing task. But the real key to getting the most out of either of these things is your ability to 3D model. You can download tons of 3D models. People have modeled so many different things and a lot of them just threw them up for free on the internet. But if you can 3D model, these will very quickly become the most versatile tool that you own. There are lots of free programs out there to 3D model. The key is finding one you like that you can learn. There probably isn't a one best program for any task, but if you can learn how to use one of them well, you can do anything you want. But remember, like welders, there are better and worse 3D printers. I think both of these are fantastic. This is a Prusa i3 Mark 3S Plus. It's about to be discontinued at like any moment, but I'll put a link to the current version down below. It's kind of pricey, but it's super user-friendly. I just hit the button, and it prints, and I don't have to worry about failures. This is a, Hall a Creality Hallet Mage 8K, not the Pro. I'll have a closer look at this in some future videos. I think it's great value for money, it works really well. It's not a bells and whistles model, it just works, and it's about a third the price of the new version of this. I'll put a link to that down below. I'm certain if you do some thinking, you will be able to find a use for these things in whatever craft you're doing. Tools, brackets, small parts, prototyping, test fitting of stuff, anything. If you do any hobby and you have a creative use for 3D printing, put it down below. I'm always looking for more ideas. 